Okay, so the main reason I'm doing this video is mostly because of this scraper and why I like to use standard scraper versus negative rake scraper. Uh, not that I'm uh, like uh, against negative rake scrapers. I use a skew chisel as a negative rake scraper for some of the fine details or stuff like that. But what I want to talk to you is and maybe a bit clarify is what actually does the the scraping and what's the most important thing about the scraper now this is like a cross section of a standard scraper um, if you have really uh, tough steel like carbide or stuff like that um, it's really hard to get a nice sharp burr here uh, they can sell you uh, carbide scrapers with uh, like a motto to shear scraper stuff like that you have to know that the burr what is what is what is important thing about scraper and uh, on the carbides you usually don't have uh, a burr that's really important thing now that's why I like like M2 or M4 steel which is softer but you can get a sharper burr and that's what causes the the scraping action um, uh, we get that by uh, when we grind this bevel here we forced the excess metal off the the edge here uh, like woodworkers use a, you all know the card scraper or cabinet scraper they will hone so this is a cross section of that card scraper you hone it and by honing in card scraper I mean um, polish it with uh, stones or uh, wet sandpaper to get a nice uh, corners here 90 degrees as much as you can and then you use a burnisher which is harder than this card scraper metal and you force or massage the burr over the edge and that's what causes the scraping action not the the metal or the uh, the right angles here on the on the edge it's the burr same thing applies here with uh, in turning with the scrapers this burr is what we need and what uh, is doing all the work for us now i'm going to t to show you today the difference between uh, scraping with negative rake scraper now bear in mind this isn't scientific uh, this isn't uh, my, my way to negotiate you away from um, negative rake scrapers or uh, vice versa now this video is not about that this is me showing you um, that you have to have a tool in your arsenal for every situation or method should I say better so I have like five different methods I can smooth the surface uh, and start with 180 grit sandpaper um, before sanding so that's really the point of this video or this demo to show you that you have to have different options now cherry is uh, sort of let's say easy on quotes um, to, to like get a smooth surface um, stuff like um, I don't know maple some some species of maple or um, some punky wood uh, like spalting uh, like spalting maple spalted maple like to tear out and uh, you have to have um, all different tools in your arsenal to, to attack the, the grain so you don't have to sand like with 60 grit to, to get the tear out now this surface has a little bit of uh, tool marks from the bevel it's actually more of a like a, because I grind with 80 grit you can maybe see a striation or two maybe here um, 
but that will sand away really without no problem. The tear out is our worst enemy regards the surface before sanding. So what I'm going to do is I have five different tools. So I'll try to divide this in half, uh, sorry, into five. So one, uh, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And uh, so we'll get this pencil mark off in a minute. Now, before I start, I'm just going to set that. It's not all the equal parts, but doesn't matter. I'm going to use this top to uh fields for scrapers and uh, these three i'll do with the gouges i want to show you before i start with the lathe on what happens uh on the surface without the lathe when we different uh when we use different approach or tool tool orientation against the wood so the grain is running this way like that for the sake of the demo, I'm going to use this side grain here. And uh, if I present the tool like I would for roughing cuts, let's say this is what the shavings looks like. Okay. If I present it, flute closed, uh, handle down. Watch this. It's really tight coil. Hopefully you can see that. I'll do it again. So this will be like a roughing cut. So much heavier and uh, it does coil up a bit due to the gouge shape. But if I close the flute and drop the handle, watch what happens with the shavings. It's really tight coil. And uh, that coil is uh, a very good sign, especially when the lathe is running and you get a lot of these, uh, like fluffy shavings. Um, you know you're cutting cleanly or I like to call it pigtail. So I'll do it again here. See? Now on the spindle gouge it's not that difficult to get these, but we'll do the same one with, this is my dedicated uh, shear scraper, or actually I would dare to call this uh, shear cutting, because the, sh the shape of the uh, the shavings. Now on this field I'm going to do a scrape, more of a scrape cut. Or so it rolls up like a carpet and again close the flute uh, and drop the handle and see the difference and the difference is behind the cut here as well so let's get out of the way that I'll do it one more cut one more time with the shear cut see that tells you that the surface will be cut cleanly now let's go with the ball gouge Pull gouge is in the middle, so this will be uh, more of a scrape, roughing cut. Really like a um, rolled up carpet. And if I close the flute and drop the handle, see? 
see. Quite a big difference. Now the same thing applies with the negative rake scraper. So this has a burr on top. So this is flat. I'll use for the scrapers. Uh, when I say I'm going to use it flat, so that's flat on the tool rest and I'll use, this is the half, I'll use for the flat section, for the flat cut, cutting, scraping, I'll use the right side and for the shear scraping I'll use the left side, same on the standard scraper. So we'll go to the side grain here, so this is scraping quite flat, get these shavings wispy ones or uh, they're not actually rolled up a bit but the surface behind it's not terrible by any means it's smooth but it's it could be better if you tilt it up on edge now we'll have a different try to get it to stay on See, a little bit different. Now with the negative rake scraper, it's more of a abrasion on the surface instead of a cutting. And uh, this is the standard scraper. So it's flat here, so rolled up carpet. And if I tilt it up on edge, see, tight coil. Now, before I start, why would somebody use negative ray scraper instead of standard scraper or vice versa? Um, negative ray scraper does not feed itself into the wood. It's, it likes to stay neutral on the surface of the wood. That means that if, f f let's give you an example, if this was a tin bowl, uh, you could actually scrape it uh, pretty much flat on the tool rest, while the standard scraper, it's really difficult to scrape a tin bowl with a flat. Uh, now, how to get this standard scraper to act like a negative rig scraper and be neutral on the wood? Just tilt it up on edge. Now it's a sheer scraping action. You get a really fine surface, but more impo importantly, it does not want to feed itself into the wood. You have much less surface area of contact, and uh, it really does help with uh, uh, feeding in the action of feeding tool itself into the wood. Now that's probably the biggest reason I would, you know, if I was buying a negative rig scraper, that would be the reason. Now, regards the surface uh, and uh, the use, the negative rig scraper is perhaps a little bit easier and uh, to, to learn and to, to use. Um, there is a bit of a learning curve if you want to do it right with the standard scraper. It's not just like sticking into the surface and see what happens. So you, with the standard scraper you really have to have a light touch, uh, really like glazing the surface. So drop the, the edge or the raise, raise the handle while you use it. It's the best safety option you can have while using these. Now, to be fair, this is this is a skew chisel. Uh, it's not maybe the best metal for a negative rig scraper. I'm not against it. Like I said, like if I have a tiny detail like this on the lid, um, you saw me. You saw the videos on uh, cross grain boxes um, where I have some tiny tiny details. I like to use a skew, and I can use even this bevel here to shear scrape if you know what you're doing the other thing that's minus for me at least on the burr on the negative rig scraper uh, drops off 
or disappear dis disappear quite fast so after 20 30 seconds max on this particular steel even less uh, it's actually gone while on the standard scraper I feel uh, because of the shape of it I get a stronger burr a sharper even and uh, it lost last long so let's go with blade running so the first bay is spindle gouge so close it close the flute drop the handle and light touch you get this fine powder and this it's still a cur curly shavings as you can see but as they fly off the edge they like to broke or straightened so we get more of that with this technique it's important to have a light touch as well and you can see the the shavings and the dust I'm getting let's see the surface okay so the trouble area is right so the grain is running this way right here at the middle up is all we are going against the grain so all this surface from this to here is against the grain so that usually um, wants to tear out quite badly uh, now that surface is nice and sandable with 180 without any uh, problems whatsoever now I'm going to do one more time because I have a when I do the test with the tool approach I have a little bit more groove now with this you don't take a lot of wood off so flute, flute is closed drop the handle and light touch and you can see the the shavings okay so that's spindle gouge this is a hybrid between spindle gouge and the ball gouge uh, Martin Pigeon uh, from Ashley Eels it's called something like that so this is again same principle close the foot drop the handle you can even raise the rest up a bit and that way you're still dropping the handle low but you're on a different uh, contact area of the wood or different part of the ball blank and you get even more of a sheer cut again light touch I'll try to catch the shavings well, these are the shavings I got from from this Okay, so if you're getting this, you know your your cut, your surface is nice and smooth. <laughs> Let's see the surface. Maybe a bit more here when I scrape. Yeah, so you can see the mark here. But the troubled area here where we are against the grain is nice and clean and the other side nice and clean so we just take this off this ridge again close the foot drop the handle i'm trying to stay away from the spindle gouge section okay that should be enough again shavings you're getting now ball gouge same principle if you have a longer wings uh, it should work even better but you have to have a 
a curved top of the wing. Uh, not sure about the straight. I don't use a straight a wing. Uh, you could probably get a nice shaving uh, as well, but you have to try it with the laid off, like I showed you. So again, close the flute, drop the handle, and light touch. Now uh, you see the shavings <laughs> again. And you can probably see the change in color as we're smoothing the surface up. <laughs> Let's see the surface. Okay, so with the bow gouge and uh, um, that shear uh, cutting gouge, both of them, and even the, with the spindle gouge, uh, so everything is nice and cleanly cut. Now let's go with the negative rake scraper, tiny bit down, and this is first flat. We should be getting these wispy shavings off, but it's a little bit different. Because we're not cutting the surface, we're actually abrading the surface, so it's like a fine powder. See? Let's see the surface. Okay, so with the negative rake scraper flat on the rest, there is a slightly, not sure if you could pick this up, I'll try to bring you closer. Okay, so with the negative rake scraper, this surface, it's uh, by any means not, not bad. Um, you could again start with 180 here. Let's see the other side. You know, nice and clean. Okay, so with the negative rake scraper, you get the same surface as with uh, these three options. That's flat. You can improve it. Any scraping tool that has a burr on it, uh, you can. Actually, I should correct myself. If you have a scraper and uh, it doesn't have a burr, it's actually not a scraper. Uh, so if you tilt it up on edge, now you're presenting that a little bit differently onto the wood, that uh, burr, it's now going to start to cut actually, and the shavings will be a little bit different. Not, not so much with the negative rake scraper, but with the standard scraper you see quite a bit of difference. So that's sheer scrape. I can feel it, it's nice and smooth. So troubled area is here, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Okay, now let's go with the final base standard scraper. A light touch is a, is a must. So you just can't shove it in and expect to, to have a nice result. So lightly touch so this is flat and you can probably see this uh, discoloration I'll clean the edge now watch this where the dust and the shavings are fly over the edge you get a really fine powder okay and you get this nice sound which to me is like the best sound in uh, wood turning And the shavings are these. And so I'm getting dust and this fluffy, really, I'm not sure how to call this. It's a little bit different. I'll try to collect these a little bit more. Sorry for. Okay. 
so I grab the shavings flat on the tool rest from a scraper, standard scraper, and these are sure cut scraping, Scra uh, shaving, sorry. So quite a bit difference, but the surface on this is not terrible, you, you'll see now. So the side grain will always scrape pretty much cleanly, but this part here, which is the, the troubled area uh, for a scraper, I like to use, like I said, a softer steel, I can get a sharper burr, and uh, the surface on, uh, on the wood is just beautiful. Now that's flat on, you always try with the scraper flat on, if that surface is not all that great uh, you tilt it up on edge so if I tilt it up on edge now it's acting like a negative rake scraper and it does not want to feed itself into the wood now these shavings I'll try to collect these as well and the difference between what I like between a standard scraper and a negative rake is I can be a little bit more aggressive so get this lovely pile of shavings and this surface now with this shoe scraper is just lovely okay so spindle gouge surface um, sheer uh, cutting gouge, I need to call it like that, ball gouge, negative rake scraper and uh, standard scraper. So you can see uh, they all do the same job if you know how the tool is working and how to present it to the wood. Here, it's slightly out of balance if you saw a short video I put on this is what I used so just get it smooth okay now I'm going to use, since I have it in my hand, a spindle gouge from, let's say, this area here that I put the pencil. So, from this area here, so again, tilt it up on, on edge, drop the handle, and light touch. Again, this is what you're looking for. That feels nice and smooth. So I went to this, to there. Okay, so that's nice and smooth here. This part I haven't touched yet. Uh, I can go with the spindle gouge here as well. Again, this is what you're looking for. Okay, so that's spindle gouge. There are two marks here since I'm rushing it. But there is no tear out. That's the important thing. You can send these uh, tool marks, but tear out. It's difficult to send out. So this is a sheer scrape, a sheer cutting gouge. Again, close the flute. Almost it's uh, nine o'clock, and drop the handle. 
and just lightly go. Again, same shavings, nothing has changed, only the tool. So I'm not trying to go with all the surface in one go, so I go in increments, so here and here and here, so you move around a bit, so that's really nice and smooth. Now let's go with the ball gouge. So again, close the flute, drop the handle and nice light, light touch. I haven't honed any of these tools yet. If they are getting dull, you can hone them. You can hone, uh, like I'll show you here. I don't like home uh, bow gouges since I'm using it in the most cases for cutting. So if you're honing it, uh, you're kind of losing that uh, control when you're cutting it. So that's nice and clean without any tear out. Uh, so honing, so grab a spindle gouge. Here, find the bevel where it is and just go lightly up to the tip. And you'll see the shavings will fly off immediately in the dust. Now that's really nice clean surface. and again these shavings no tear out whatsoever so let's go with the negative rake scraper try to do it here with tripod in place so this is flat It's excellent for, and it's easy to use actually, like, like flat this, in this orientation. And it does not feed itself into the wood, so that's good for any beginner. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Now we can improve even that by sheer scraping it, tilt it up on edge. I feel that the scraper, especially the negative weight scraper, you can get better surface if you tilt it up on edge. No matter what they say that it's like you get the best result by keeping it flat or stuff like that. Just tilt it up on edge with a nice cutly, nice uh, grind burr, and you'll see the difference. So that's nice and beautiful. And finally, the standard scraper, flat, nice and light. Now pear does like to scrape, that's what I grabbed the first. But the same principle applies with other tools, with other woods. So if some, one method doesn't work, you try the other one. So this is flat on the tool rest and it's nice and clean. And we'll even improve that by tilt it up on edge. Now this will just go in increments.
Okay. That's really smooth. Now you can't ask for a better surface on a piece of wood. Now that's nice and smooth. Um, you know what? I'm going to hit this. And I haven't uh, done this uh, all the way to the top, so I can sand it. Like I said, the first thing and the easiest thing for me is to grab a standard scraper. And if I know that some wood won't scrape easily with the wood uh, with the scraper flat, I just went with the sheer. Uh, scraping immediately. I can shape this a little bit better. Not that it's important, but, but that's what I like about standard scraper. I can shape a wood instead of just uh, abrading it and uh, prepare it for sanding. I can shape it, and the burr lasts longer. In my case, anyway. So just shear scrape this when I start the with the flat. Let me know in the comments below if you like to see more of this kind of videos talking about tools, and uh, I can talk a little bit more about scrapers in general and how to use them, let's say, on the inside of a bowl. Okay, so that's the scraper we made today. And that surface is nice and clean, we just hit it with 180. feeling a bit lazy so I should grab a fresh piece of sandpaper but this will be done in a seconds so this is now 180 240 I usually finish off with inertia sander just to remove any sanding marks. So this part here I haven't touched with tools or sandpaper. And that's done. So that took like a minute maybe for sanding. And that's nice and smooth. You can even, if you want, apply a little bit of wax here. Just to see the surface coming. That's it. Hopefully you like that. Uh, like I said, this isn't uh, something to tell you that you have to stay away from negative rig scraper or standard scraper. This is my method of showing you uh, what I have in uh, my uh, technique, arsenal tool, ar arsenal to attack, um, like uh, even the punkiest the most stubborn grain on a, on a piece of wood and I want to get a nice fresh I'm sorry nice fresh a nice clean surface from the tool 
before I start to, start to sand because it do, then it doesn't uh, take long so it's nice and easy and fast and doesn't have to be uh, like a boring process just wipe, wipe it off and that's it try to get it to focus a bit this part like I said I haven't touched 